go back to the days of eating on the show? No. All right. No, we're not. Good, because the last thing I need is... Spare last, everybody that. The last thing I need is you smacking on some fucking pizza. People were rioting. Oh, oh geez. Early on, like, I would... I would I'd, I'd be in a hurry to get off work and get home and set up and stuff. And so usually I was eating while I was setting up. And sometimes I would be eating at the beginning of the shows. Oh, and yeah. People had, loved it. We had riots on our hands almost <laughs> borderline. People got to eat. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I was like, look, y'all, it's like we can either be late getting this started or you can deal with me eating tortilla chips or something <laughs> for five minutes. Like, got to make a decision. And everyone yeah. was like, we'll just do it later. Yep. No one. No one. Fine, wanted, then. So. Yep. But Anyways. here we are, episode 165 of the Herpeticulture Podcast, which is brought to you by Steve Snakeshuary and his Venom Hot Sauce. Check them out, stevesnakeshuary.com. Snakeshuary.com. Venom Hot Sauce, it's really good stuff. Derek, do you like hot sauce? Are you a hot sauce guy? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not picky. You're not a connoisseur. <laughs> I kind of like it all. <laughs> all right, there you go. Yeah. Well, Steve has some really good stuff. We like the cottonmouth sauce, so we highly recommend that. Uh, oh, and then blackboxcages.com. Check them out. You need a rack. You need a cage. They're the people to talk to. We got it all. All your needs. Lots of options. And all your needs. We love them. Yeah. Yep. Go. Uh, if anybody's curious to see there's some of their products in more depth, we did a review of some of all the stuff that I have from them. So if you feel like seeing what they're all about. Go check that out. We're going to do a little yeah. bit more detail. We need to do a video just I'm planning stuff. to do some this weekend because I have the house nice. myself. Nice. There you so, go. I got nothing to do. That's why he's eating I'm pizza tonight. That's right. I got home from work. I was like, I'm not leaving the house again. <laughs> Speaking of, where's he going now? Now he's in like a... Oh. He's detouring. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's going all over the place. He's man. like, he's might a busy as well be guy. on the moon at this point. <laughs> He's a busy guy. He works for Domino's. Everybody's in I feel bad man. for him, though, because I bet you there's people that watch that tracker and they're like, we saw you go. <laughs> you went right minutes. past us. Yeah, you went right past my house to go deliver another pizza. <laughs> they probably don't get tips. You know those that. guys, they catch wind all day. You know they do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's brutal. And then, like, because they took two extra minutes, they're like, yeah, you're not getting a tip. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's messed up, man. Ooh. Especially with the cost of gas right now. Like, I understand Domino's is probably giving at least a little something, but well, we can yeah. tell you black box shipping will be better than Domino's delivery. Oh. All right. Woo. <laughs> nice. I actually just did a post earlier uh, that talked about which enclosures they have that ship assembled and which don't, uh, nice. which is, I mean, there's more of them that ship assembled than there are ones that don't. The BioG is one of them, which is one of my favorites. I'm waiting for the Baron Tracer to get a little bit bigger so I can throw him in that. Uh, Man, just put him in there, fill it up. I thought about minutes. it, but I, he's so small still. I was worried it'd freak him out, and he, I don't know, he already, he already doesn't tolerate me very much. Yeah. He just wants to get away. So, you put a bunch of plants in it, rock and roll. Rhinos are growing faster than plants, he is. Hides, yeah, right. that's right. Fill, fill her up. Yeah. Uh, so please check them out. Uh, yep. This week we are joined by Mr. Derek Roddy. What's up? Hey. <laughs> very, very glad to have you man thanks for uh thanks for joining us on this yeah. on this eve yeah i don't think yeah. we've ever had like a, a we've maybe we've had a, a semi-focused blackhead no we haven't on episode yeah, yeah it might have been oh wait it might have been on my sabbatical know, yeah but give me a while it's gone so i've been wanting to do a blackhead episode for a long time so i'm excited because right. i love blackheads justin doesn't get it and I can't really explain it, but I love them. I don't know so. why. One was just do a little bit more for me for some reason. Man. Even then, like the whole getting being food every time you touch them kind of thing is not. A, <laughs> yeah. I don't get the appeal yeah. there, but yeah. Well, a lot of them, uh, a lot of the like really tame ones mm -hmm. are some of the bigger ones, you know. Or yeah. Overfed animals, kill them right. with kindness. Kind of for sure care them to death yeah yeah um i mean all are mine they're all savages no oh, yeah. they eat all the time so that's the difference i feed a lot but i just feed a lot of small stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm starting to think that's a that i'm starting to transition to that kind of side of things 
But before we get into too much of the details with Blackheads, give us a little introduction on yourself and, uh, you know, kind of the different species you keep right now. Obviously, we know you keep Blackheads, but some of the other stuff you have and like yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. things, basic introduction stuff, you know. Well, right now, all I have is Blackheads. Oh, nice. Uh, my carpets, I loaned out with a few different people around town. Some younger guys, some some veterans, yeah. so to speak. Um, yeah, yeah, it's fun just to get younger guys into it as well. And I really just don't have a lot of space, so it's yeah. for me, it's, it's kind of helpful. Yeah, and I'm sure blackheads take up enough space as as they do. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, yeah, all of my cages are five by three. Okay, and I don't. None of my animals are like really you know, big, right? I mean, I do have a couple of girls that are up there in age that are pushing that seven and a half, seven ish feet, you know, right? Um, but mostly my girls are five and a half to six and a half feet. Oh, wow, that's that's uh, that's definitely something that I'd want to get into <laughs> tonight is size on black kids because you know, if there's a lot of you know, I've seen personally some just monster black. Oh man! You know? I kind I kind of like getting them. into it. it yeah, was, it was nuts. Uh, I learned my lesson really quick about getting adults. Um, and I had, man, I had some that were nine, ten feet. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy smokes! Yeah, uh, and a lot of young ones that were that big. You know, like four yeah. or five year olds strange and of course they ended up dying at eight years old nine right old. yeah, so, so yeah. A byproduct of the overfeeding thing. oh yeah now. for sure that's definitely something i want to talk in more detail on um a little later but i guess to kind of you know kick this off how did you how did you get into blackheads and i guess you know why why blackheads what what drew you to them um a picture a picture in snakes of the world it was a i think it was a picture that dick bartlett maybe had taken mm -hmm. and it was a blackhead at like the base of a tree stump and the body structure just the, the blackhead I, I don't know it was something about it at the time uh getting that book i mean maybe the late 80s i want to say 87 maybe 88 somewhere in there mm -hmm. i bought my first pair of carpet pythons in 1988 from randy mcknight and ironically i still have that line of animals oh nice <laughs> after all this time uh, that's pretty crazy yeah that's amazing uh, yeah pretty funny what what line is that um supposedly they were uh Wild caught animals from Atherton Tablelands. Okay. Um, so, but that's a huge area, you know, it's the size right. of South Carolina or, or bigger. You know? mm -hmm. So um, that could be very vague. Right. But apparently they were brought in by Hank Mould and they've been around since the 70s. And yada, yada, yada. So, cool. Whatever. Okay. Uh, but still have those. That's kind of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh huh. And just that picture, um, you know, you know, I kind of went through everything, blood pythons, berms, of course, uh, had everything, African rocks, retics, mm. rolls, like rainbow boas, all mm. of that stuff throughout time, you know. Um, but I got a chance locally in Florida when, I don't know what year this was, maybe 2000, I want to say. And his name is uh, Tom McLean. And he was advertising some babies on King Snake. And I noticed that he was local to me. So I reached out to him. We met in a Home Depot parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I bought a pair of babies. Um, nice. Ironically, that's the line of animals that gave us the Xanthix. Oh, months. really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, Funny story about that. Tom Keoghan ended up getting the adults 
from Tom McGlay mm -hmm. and had bred back one of the babies from the pair and got the Atlantic. My animals were younger. I had a pair of babies, so I had to grow them up. Uh, so I, a couple years later, had a 100% hatch rate on the pair. Didn't get Xanthix, but I got the Black Stripe mm -hmm. on three of them out of 10, I think. Oh, wow. So that was cool. So I just wrote it off. But eventually, after another two clutches, or another one clutch, I think, maybe on the third clutch, I hit the Xanthix. So interesting, like neither one of us knew, like Keoghan or myself, like, or even Tom McClay, he had no idea. So That's really interesting. Yeah. So what's the, did you ask what the current collection is at the moment? Like how many are you, is it mostly blackheads? And then you, I know you have some, some Aurelia. Everything's stuff, blackheads yeah. now. Okay. I just don't have a lot of room. <clears throat> yeah. Between South Carolina and then Florida. Uh, both both spaces I have are pretty small, so I have to keep it pretty mm -hmm. limited. <laughs> so that's why I'm stacked up pretty tall. Mm -hmm. I have to get on a ladder to get in here. Get <laughs> a lot of space. <laughs> um, yeah, you're from South Carolina originally, right? Yes. Yeah. Really? Oh, I didn't you know, know that. We're in Beaufort, so we're down yes. I was going to ask you about that, and that's so yeah. funny because I filmed uh, on the drum side of things. I filmed both of my DVDs at ETV. Oh yeah, yep. Very my nice. one of my best friends, uh, Scott Johnson. He worked there, and we were able to get in on the weekends on the off time mm -hmm. and use the studio. So I'm very familiar. Charleston, Buford. I'm originally from Polly's Island, like Litchfield. Oh, okay. Like yeah, I went. I went to. Um, I went to college in Georgetown, South Carolina. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. right on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where I went to college. That's awesome. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in Polly's Island fishing and stuff. So. You know, in the seventies, I was born in seventy two, so there was nothing really going on there. My dad was a contractor for his mm -hmm. well, he's retired now. Um <laughs> and there was nothing going on. <laughs> there was no development, nothing. There was a I mean, few there's still nothing beach, going on whatever. out there. And Polly's Shoot. Island, there is. Yeah, dude. The Georgetown. Georgetown, no. Georgetown's a little shithole. It yeah, smells yeah, all yeah, the yeah. time. Yeah, going but, up to Myrtle Beach, man. Yeah. You wouldn't recognize it. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, man. Polly's yeah. Island's hopping now. Mm -hmm. It's not, But back then, it was four months maximum. You know, like nobody, nobody was yeah. there. So oh, we yeah. moved. My, my dad moved us to Columbia, so all of my school and everything, like high school, middle school, whatnot, but I was in Columbia. Nice. So, yeah, yeah but I, I lived no in idea. Charleston. <clears throat> yeah, it's all over. That's awesome. So, and you're in Florida now? Uh, back and forth. Yeah, I'm in South Carolina now, actually, but yeah, I didn't oh. go back and forth. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. What man. did the, what came first, the music or the, the herps? Or were they both kind of a you know, here's the thing. Um, my dad is kind of like the Grizzly Adams type of guy. Mm -hmm. Like wild animals just come up to him for no apparent reason. <laughs> <laughs> Hummingbirds, like, just land right on him. Yeah. Um, like he's, he's just that kind of guy. So I kind of, I grew up with it. My family's very musical. Uh, my dad had a song on Billboard in the 80s on the country charts and, wow. you know, went through that whole, like, professional music thing or whatnot mm -hmm. when I was young with him. Um, but he stayed with real estate. <laughs> he said, uh, I'm not going to do music because there's no money in it. <laughs> yeah, a little, bit more a little bit more reliable, a little bit more money, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I grew up around both of it. I mean, we would – he would rescue everything. And I remember a really young memory was a corn snake that was hit and there was in the road and there was eggs <laughs> oh, <laughs> like sprawled oh, out. Man. You know, we took them home and tried to hatch them. I think actually a couple of them did hatch, but it was like 17 eggs or something we picked up. Wow. But then we caught a black rat snake that laid eggs. Um, yeah. So that, that's kind of how it started, you know? And then by the mm -hmm. time I got to high school, I was into the, Exotics, ball pythons, carpets, of course. Mm -hmm. I, read, I met Randy McKnight. He had 
doom wounds and all the Peruvian or all of all of the Bobas, locality mm. Bobas of Surinam's Peruvians, Bolivians, lots of emeralds. Like he had a lot of stuff. Diamond carbon crosses. Mm. Um, what was the initial draw for Morelia for you when you were heavier into those? Randy Randy Manite's collection. Oh, okay. Because I mean, I, I, I want to say maybe 88, 89 were the first years I went over there, and he had animals then that were I mean, just super black and yellow, like big ones mm -hmm. too, six feet, seven feet. And animals that looked like diamonds, but they weren't actual. I think he did have one male diamond, and then he had like an he had an animal that was kind of like a coastalish looking kind of a greenish olive kind of coastal if you know what i mean like you've probably seen that kind of look before. yeah um ironically that diamond and that animal produced the nicest babies but he had <laughs> other you know diamond carpet crosses mm -hmm. that were every bit as black and yellow as jungles and they had no jungle blood oh, wow. and hmm. he was producing these things by the hundreds over the time period I knew it, you know. Jeez. And, you know, they were going somewhere. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> they eventually became People's Jungles Collection. Yeah, I was about to say, and that's how Diamond Jungle Crosses got started. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there were a lot of guys doing it. I remember uh, Gary Sipperly and Don Hamper. There was a lot of guys around back then that were that was kind of like a decade after the start of it all, you know, right. maybe 15 years after the start of kind of a, the commercialization of, of pythons and bobas and stuff. Right. Yeah. It's an interesting time to, to, to kind of see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can only imagine how like watching, watching the progression from like how things were, you know, then to how, you know, insane things are yeah. now it seems you know i uh, man, i i was going through some stuff and i pulled out some old price list you know they used to mail price list mm. uh used to get polaroids of animals yeah. <laughs> oh god <laughs> you, you know what i mean <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, real horse and buggy stuff here i'm dating myself but, <laughs> oh that's crazy man yeah but i still have some of that stuff i mean i, I and Casey back in the day, Dick Gergen. Dick uh, Gergen wouldn't even talk to you on the phone about animals unless you send him a check. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. First off, I couldn't imagine some sending somebody a check for an animal. Uh, <laughs> Man, they would mail the they would mail them in coolers, like igloo coolers, just taped. <laughs> No way. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. way. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. That's crazy. So that would like the actual animal would get shipped like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's, all, it's oh, actually pretty dude. safe if you think about it. Oh yeah, no. I mean it's yeah, it's it's a good it's a good thought. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. A lot of stuff man. back then was uh airport to airport too, like Delta Dash. You know, right. whatever that is today like most of all of that animal transfer stuff back then was like that it wasn't like fedex or anything you know? right right yeah no, i mean crazy <laughs> a lot of them was just doing u.s mail and nobody knew no worse for wear you know what i mean right so. you know talking about that in the and honestly like it's it's funny because looking like looking back i'm like how did this even happen but like at the time I didn't know any better, but there was one time and like, I hate to, you know, throw out names, but you know, somebody, a fr somebody essentially bought me a yellow rat from underground reptiles. Okay. And which, which was cool. Like, that's fine. But this thing showed up in like a cardboard box from like the U S postal service, just like in a bag. <laughs> and i was just like yeah. really confused i'm like what is what is happening right now like, what year what is, this was 2000 2015 oh okay yeah, maybe That's 14 you know like it was recent enough for it to not have shown up like that you know like it's so they're really... right down the street from my place in florida right oh, okay oh yeah, yeah and, yeah. and uh, like literally like three miles and oh wow then seagull too which is now 
well, it was Jay Eaton's place now, and Josh's, uh, what's his name, place. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's changed hands. But I met Ryan when I moved down here in 90, I want to say 96. Mm-hmm. Okay. Something like that. Um, yeah, like I actually wired a few of his stores, like the lighting in a few of the stores back then. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's so I've known Ryan a while, but it, you know, that was when there was like three employees. And oh yeah. It, no, it I'm sure. Thing, you know? Yeah. I'm sure it was some kind of mishap, but that's the only time I've ever received a snake like that. And it was, no, like, it probably wasn't. I mean, that was, I could, I could see that happening. Oh yeah, no, I'm sure. It Maybe was, even outsourced from somebody else. Oh yeah, no, very knows. possible. It brought it likely wasn't even shit from them, to be honest. Like, and obviously, I'm not talking Which anything thing? bad about. So it was years ago. Justin was out while I was saying this. Anybody listening? My but, pizza came yeah, and I had no. to put it in the oven so the cat wouldn't mess with it. Some years, <laughs> ago, some years ago, somebody bought me a yellow rat from Underground Reptiles, and it came through like it showed up in my mailbox it came through the u.s postal service and it was just just in like one of those white kind of flat cardboard boxes and it was just like in a bag inside of that i mean you can ship snakes to the postal postal service like really when i've gone in there because i guess for whatever reason because of my shirts and hats and stuff i guess the postal worker people know that i'm like dealing with that stuff and so she's like oh are you shipping snakes and i was like no i use that for fedex she's like you can ship them through us Hmm. Kind of like I'd rather not. Yeah, but. no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen what you do to my regular packages. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. and hey, they might need the business. You know, like I know yeah. the postal service has been shady for a while. So, <laughs> I mean, I know FedEx isn't, isn't perfect by any means, but oh, yeah, I'll trust no. FedEx with a snake long before I trust yeah. the, the postal service. Uh, you know, but, I've I've had pretty good luck. If you're smart about it, yeah, you should. <laughs> I, or not. I've never really had. It did I have, thought, I had an animal show up to a guy one time, like, this thing was, like, literally dead. And I was, I was ooh. so heartbroken, man. I was like, what the hell happened? And then he took it home. He put it, I mean, like, you sent me a video of it. The thing was, uh, it was dead. You know? Never happened before. Harper takes it home. He sends me a, a, a video, like, maybe three hours later. And this animal is up in the box, like tongue flicking, like aggressive, like ready to go. He ate like the next day or whatever. And oh, wow. And I, you know, obviously I was like, you know, send me that thing back. I send him his money back or whatnot. Not, you know, no harm, no foul. But um, the animal, I have it here and it's doing great. And it's <laughs> savage. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but dead. Dude, I am telling you, if you see this video, you'd be like, that is a dead snake. No it's, way. Yeah, I mean, it's wild. Yeah, that's it's, crazy. These, a lot they of, can, they a can lot of these animals. Creatures. Yeah, a lot of these animals, I think they're a lot tougher than we we like to think they are. Yeah. Like they can handle yeah. a lot more than, than what's purposefully or unintentionally thrown at them. Yeah. Well, man, look, you know, they didn't... <laughs> they haven't been around for millions of years for never. Yeah, you know. That's the thing like, that trips me out. I think that's the most fascinating thing about kind of what, why I like doing it. I mean, the, spe- the species, whatever, that's one thing. But to look at this animal that like sticks his head out of an egg and to think to, like, man, we've been out of the jungle like what? 75,000 years? <laughs> 80,000 years? Yeah. Uh, and to look at this thing that's been like a hundred million years doing what it does, mm-hmm. you know, that, that just blows my mind, you know? So yeah. that's, that's kind of like the lust, the allure of it. For me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I have sure. something I think about a good bit too. Yeah. Um, except for, you know, chondros cause they're like, Stupid. Oh, you're yeah. trying to feed yeah. me? I'm just going to die instead. Uh, <laughs> I'm supposed to eat this? No, nope. I think I'll just I think I'll just fall off my perch. Oh, eat this mouse? I think I'll really? eat this puppy. I think I'll yeah. eat this puppy man, pad they're, instead. Yeah, they're they're I don't know if you've ever kept chondros, man, but they are dumb. No, I've had chondros. Man, plenty of pairs of chondros. My wife yeah. is really good with them. Yeah. Like she's I love them. Justin's not. It's the, I, hmm. Yeah, it's like she gets, I, she'll get clutches. My fair share. They, they hatch and they eat and they go on and thrive and be not really spectacular at all. 
times. Okay. She doesn't have anything now. Like she, she doesn't have time for it with her job. But mm-hmm. yeah, she was she was good with it. Nice. And is she, yeah, uh, as far as the music are, stuff over issues. the years, has she helped out in terms of like keeping up with stuff when you're not around? Because oh, I, mean, I don't know if you tour as much as you used to or if you're away as much as you used to be. But Well, definitely not since COVID. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I kind of had a lot of a lot of reptile stuff going on. This year, not so much. I, I put a few things together and got some things going, but I'm going to start getting busy again traveling. So I kind of alternate, you know, I, mm-hmm. I try to do a snake year, try to do a drum year, try to do a snake year, try to, and it just, it, when I'm here doing the snake stuff, it allows me time to be able to play and get my stuff together musically for when I'm going to be doing that. You know? Yeah. And it gives the animals a break, which I try to do, you know, I try not to breed every year if I can right. help it. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah, not just for the animals, fun. but for, you know, customers of, the lines of my animals that I've created, you know, trying not to overproduce. And yeah, not fair right, yeah. To your customer, you know? Yeah. Well, that, and I mean, when you got the schedule like you do, you know, you kind of have to be pretty picky about, you know, your battles yeah. and stuff when it comes to that. And <laughs> if I got to pay more attention to it than sort yeah. of a, a normal, normal person. And I, you know, I learned my lesson that, you know, having more than 25 babies, blackhead babies to feed, like last year. Was it last year or the year before? It was 2020 and 2021. Yeah, 20 uh, was like seven clutches, and last year was nine clutches. So it was, uh, it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But I try not to do that. Like, I, I wouldn't, I definitely would not do that. But going back to my wife, I mean, yeah, I mean, she's been instrumental, and in, no pun intended, um, <laughs> in allowing. I like it you know, this, this to go on. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because she was initially fascinated by snakes, but wasn't all like gung ho about them all being up on her and stuff, you know? And, uh, she likes the blackheads for that reason, more so than like the carpets, and Marilia and whatever other stuff, because they're like wet noodles for the most mm-hmm. part. Like they don't wrap up on you and stuff. You know? They yeah. are bitey, but you know, they're easily to, you can avoid it, you know? It's not very hard to avoid them. Right. Just don't get your hands towards the mouth. <laughs> it's easy. It really yeah. is. Yeah. So surely you've kept Womas at one point or another. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like Womas too. So how do those compare to the blackheads in your experience just in terms of well getting babies while, established? You know? While we're talking about that, can we kind of like talk about the care with the blackheads, you know, kind of compare it, but also kind of go into a little bit of detail about, you know, kind of the general care for, you know, a blackhead. And then, well, look, you know, man, you got to try to kill one. <laughs> well, that's, that's always good to know. You know, like, it's not, like, I don't, I don't do anything different than I would do for any other animal in that habitat, let's say, you know, mm-hmm. um, but they got a hot spot during the day. Maybe it's 100, 101, 2, 3 degrees. Maybe, maybe oh, summer so. when it's hot in here, it gets. But then the other side of the cage, it's like 84. So, okay, so they do. They have a very warm hot spot then. Yeah. I mean, okay. they can, you know, I mean, not directly. You have to be like directly under it to get that. Right, right. Yeah, I know what you mean. And the lights went off because the sun is down. It's on a solar thing. So right. What's that? Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. Cool. So, um, okay, so you use basking lights versus like a, a um, it's just heat for panel? it's just for the sun cycle, you know. Okay, I think yeah. that more than anything. And both of my rooms, uh, I don't really have a lot of animals down in Florida. I think I have a few pair of things, just depending on what I'm trying to breed or whatnot. But both rooms are not like what you would consider in your home to be like. Uh, temperature control or whatnot. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of variance here, so right. when it's cold outside. It kind of gets cool in here, you know. Mm-hmm. Hot, same thing. Now I have an air conditioner. It's an ambient, like 75 in here all the time. But the cages, because of the lights, right. they're only 15 watts, so they're not like you can hold them. You know what I mean? They don't mm-hmm. get hot per se, mm-hmm. but it's enough, you know. And once the panel kicks off they have nothing just the same as they would in the wild nothing 
Right. I mean, you get a little bit of ambient, you know, um, and then the AC in here kicks off at midnight and it's off for like six hours, but it doesn't really okay. make much of a difference in the cage. Yeah. It's closed. So. so is your main heat source the, the actual, the light you use? Yeah, it's enough. Okay. Okay. It is. It's I mean, nice. And like I said, it's not hot enough to, to burn anything. Yet. Right, right, yeah. It works well. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you so use... the natural, I think the natural time you yeah, know, of for the sure. sun and everything is, is more important per se. Because the temperature is basically the same year round. It's just when the, how much right. of it they get changes. So. Right. Yeah. As far as cooling down, though, because I mean, I that's something I was talking about recently. It was just my struggle with with cooling stuff down enough to for the things that really need a serious cool down. You know, not having a cooler or something to put these things in, like a you know a fridge, basically. But what species? Like it, <clears throat> uh, so, like native South Carolina? No, no, we're talking like Chinese. Elabe. But same latitude, longitude kind of roundabout kind of species. Yeah, but the bimaculata in particular, they got to get really cold to breed, which is why I struck out this year, I think. But I think the reason right. for that is, is because I don't know about up there, but it stayed like in the 70s, what December and January into like it stayed warm, like things weren't going to get right. cold. It enough, got right? cold in January. So I don't, is that a, do you have a similar issue with that up the coast there? Where like um, do you have a dedicated thing where you cool things down with, or is it a, a? Well, most of the breeding that I try to do happens in Florida because I'm I try I spend most of the time there, but I just don't have a lot of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll take four pair down, you know, five pair, and uh, make that happen, you know. Maybe we'll take them back and alternate them out, you know. Mm -hmm. So down there, it it pretty much is neutral. For the most part, just the sun, because like we'll in mid January we'll have an eighty-two degree day, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like and even summertime down here, like the average day for us would be like eighty-eight, something like that. So it's like perfect for the whole breeding thing. So, do you have to cool blackheads at all to you know kind of trigger a breeding? I think it's more on the life cycle. I think. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, I think the temps do help. I think that they need to know to like go right here, but despite what we do in a box, these animals know. Right. You know what I mean? And, and it's weird because because of technology, humans have lost that ability. But a way that you can see it is ask any cop what happens on a full moon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we yeah. still we still yeah. have that tie to that. We've just lost it with technology, but the animals haven't. They know right. what the hell's going on out there. Right. You know, despite what we're doing in a box, man, they they got that all figured out. Mm -hmm. That's part of that 120 million year thing. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So how I would think, you how would you compare in terms of the blackheads versus Wilmas, which I feel like is kind of the, the age old sort of debate in a sense? I mean, I, I don't. I don't is really is is size really the only difference? Walnuts to me seem to be a little more quirky. You know, they definitely feed better. I have a picture somewhere of a walnut, like half in the egg, wrapped up on a pinky. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, which is not usually what blackheads are all about. You know, okay. Uh, you know, you have to assist most of them. Some lines are better than others with rodents and just getting them. not it's not even rodents it's just getting them going in general because they don't want to eat anything not wow. their native food source that you would think they would eat nothing hmm. so oh, i actually didn't know that about blackheads i thought they were much more on the side of like yeah rock and roll you know once eat, they run, right out the egg. yeah once they're eating they're eating yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not a not an issue after that if it's not eating it's gonna die for some reason they're the alterna of Australia. Uh, the, 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 like the once they're going, they're yeah. Yeah. The Australian the go, yeah. Okay. That's once you it. get them started, it's all downhill from there. But getting yeah, them there is tough. I mean, and again, people kill them with kindness. Like the type of stuff they're eating in the wild, you know, uh, frilled lizards, bearded dragons, walmas, fierce snakes, you know, browns, all of this other 
Oh, so stuff they're that so they're big have, they're big snake eaters mm-hmm. and reptiles. That's pretty much their well. entire diet. Wow. Know, okay. For all the reptiles. So then you ask yourself, okay, well, where do they where are they getting their nutrition? Because these animals, they're basically skin and bone, literally. I mean, there's some very lean muscle, right? Mm-hmm. So where and not just with black ass, but with any animal in general, like where is most of the nutrition coming from? Even in mammals, like when you look at hyenas and lions stuff, like half of the time, where do they go? What's the first thing they go for? Liver. Stomach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stomach content. Yeah. So when you think about a black cat, okay, so it's eating a bearded dragon that's got a gut load of insects and rubs and various other, you know, whatever. That's the important thing. Mm-hmm. So, commercially farm rodents. What what are their gut loads? Soy, it's essentially dog food. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. You know, Soy products. Yeah. So even if they were eating rodents in the wild, like they weren't necessarily be eating, you know, rodents that were full of. Well, maybe you know, because a lot of rodents get into human habitation. That's really the only place you see them mm-hmm. in the wild. So, but yeah, I mean, they're more geared towards you know, a different type of theme, which is why they're prone to all of this fat liver and, and various conditions and the captivity if you ever feed them. So. And so do you think that's more so in like a, a feeding too much thing or sort of a lack of, of space to move around a little more and sort of burn some calories? No. I mean, my blackheads, you look at them right now, like every one of them, they're like in their box. Mm-hmm. Pulled up in the corner, resting. And they're not like, but I feed a lot. And so, again, like I'm, every couple of days, I'm feeding small meals. Besides, I mean, a friend of mine told me that he had a guy radio tracking blackheads and they were eating a dozen to, you know, 15 to 18 times a month. You know, oh, that's a lot. Just, wow. And they're constantly, like during the day, like in and out of burrows, like looking for stuff. And they appear mm-hmm. to the drag it. Maybe next day thrilled, and then maybe on the highway crossing the road you might get a, a road kill because they will right. get road kill right on right on the road. Um, in fact, that's probably a lot of the diet yeah. around <laughs> highways for black dads. I would and I, I think animals. a lot, I think a lot more animals eat, at least a lot more snakes eat road kill than we realize. Oh yeah, like, I mean, I got uh, pictures of blackheads eating roadkill. Yeah, it's an easy meal it doesn't run away. <laughs> yeah, like it's right there. You know, it was it really put it in perspective to me. Like when I was talking to a rodent guy, and I heard somebody else ask, like, how long are rodents good in a freezer? You know, and he's like, I mean, a lot of people say a year because they get freezer burnt. He's like, but he's like, snakes eat dead, rotting stuff in the wild. <laughs> like a little freezer burn isn't. Yeah. gonna hurt them you know yeah. like you know well, like I, I think it depends on the exposure well you know, yeah yeah wild, to an extent, like if, yeah. if you hit them with something in captivity and they're not used to it you know it right. probably, obviously probably cause an issue but you know you would think yeah i mean i've seen cotton mouse eating dead shit off the road mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean they, you know Cotton mouths are one of those species though you could send me like a picture or video of eating pretty much anything and i'd be like yeah probably yeah like, i believe yeah. it cotton mouths are great I love not them. to advocate for any of that or whatever, but they're great pet snakes. <laughs> I want one you eventually. You can't feed them rodents like a week out of the wild. They're great. <laughs> yeah, I, they're they're pretty much at the top of my one of the top of my list for pygmy predators. rattlers, man. Pygmies, yeah, pygmies are up there, but pygmies I re- are aggro though, man. Oh yeah, but they're so great, man. They're so no, they pretty. Are. Yeah, I want to one once I have a external building for my reptiles, I want all the local venomous minus coral snakes, but I think that would be that'd be pretty cool. Nice big naturalistic setups. I don't know, man. We're gonna be I'm be popping out enough corn snakes that if you wanted a coral. Yeah, so when's the last time you've been to Edisto? Uh, uh, I, I was, was I was there to the yeah. beach. Actually, yeah, you went both the week, of us right? were yeah, there within not, like two weeks yeah. of each other. I was there for you know wedding anniversary but i just was a serpentarian looking it was closed yeah 
they their hours they limited their hours they, because they of just COVID, opened so. though okay they, yeah 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 yeah. like they're only open three days a week and it was yeah. like thursday friday and saturday and yeah. that was it so and i i remember being at that place like the first week it opened oh wow and then you guys i don't you guys all know ricky uh, ricky waters no, I, don't think, no? I don't think so it sounds familiar uh, he's a local yeah. legend like yeah yeah <laughs> uh so yeah, 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 yeah. He, uh, I remember being down there with him, like even before the place opened. And another friend of mine, Richie Isaacs, who's a musician friend, but he's he was friend of Ricky's as well, and mm -hmm. kind of an outside thing or whatnot. So I remember that place going up, thinking, "Man, this is going to be cool. It's beautiful, the building and everything." You know? it's a good place. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time since I've been there, and I really yeah. wanted to go, but unfortunately, their hours were, were I, odd. I went I'm trying to think. I think the last time I was there was 2000, I want to say 15, maybe 16, probably 15 though. And man, I, I don't even, I can't even imagine how it's grown since then. But back then, man, it was, it was nuts. I mean, yeah, it's a cool setup. It was definitely some of their tactics were extremely questionable. Um, but it was, it's cool to look at. Yeah. But from a keeper's perspective, eh, you know, and like, like what, yeah, what, yeah. what, what, like, what do you like the, their pits, the pits? Yeah. Like, well, the you pits know, are emptied every year and then replenished. Yeah. Which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's hours. wild. Like I went into like the main one, like the one out, they have one outside with a bunch of locals and like, okay, like, yeah, that, that's kind of cool. But they've they got have the venomous pit. They've got a non venomous pit. Yeah. And then, but they yeah. have one, they have one inside with like a tree that almost goes up to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. You look up and oh, the yeah, well, no, like I didn't see any chondros, but I saw boas up there. I saw a yellow anaconda up in the tree. You look down in the moat, there's a green anaconda. You see a ball <laughs> python, you see a ball python curled up like under yeah. a log over there corn snakes going around you know it's like this is this is odd I think you're just jealous that you couldn't pull that off in your house you're damn right i couldn't pull that off in my you house know but here's the thing. die here's <laughs> the thing. that's here's a testament to that right now regardless how well the animals did or whatnot but some of those animals i know have been there for decades you know what right I mean? yeah. so obviously you know some of some of them are cool and it just goes right. back to Know, that whole 120 million year thing right you know these animals got a good handle on it i mean I, people talk about like the differences in species and i think that that's only like a geographical difference because like you take an animal like a chondro and then an animal like an emerald mm -hmm. you know that are separated by the entire earth on the, either side mm -hmm. and two different species and they evolved exactly the same to right be the same and to look the same and to do the exact same thing why because geographically their environments were the same right you know so mm -hmm. as long as you keep that in mind you know if you look at the belt you know where the equator right. is and you're all you know all of that stuff is right. going to be fairly there's gonna, the there's going to be a, a baseline that's going to be very it's going to be a baseline them. yeah now you got to take altitude into example like for mm -hmm. Poland's or you right you know whatever um but and now that's easier than ever with google earth and and all this stuff <laughs> right. you know like you can really you can really like kind of like hone in like what you should be doing in your environment you know to make it to make a species successful right yeah, and I think and it's stuff with like, you know, I think stuff with like bowlings, those are I think depending on where you live can really determine a lot of the success that you have. You know, I feel like guys like us that are really, you know, really low, like we're basically at sea level here in coastal South Carolina. I feel like breeding I think bowlings, we're below it. Yeah, pretty much. You know, <laughs> but like breeding I think breeding those things would be depths. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, but it's like, I feel like breeding those would be much more difficult here because it's such oh, a absolutely. low elevation comparatively, you know, I mean, they're I think maybe there's know. a certain lack of oxygen they have to have. <laughs> that's, that's what we're not I think getting. it's something really simple that people are overlooking. What do you, like, you, you want to like, share what that is? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, like geographically, where are they? They're almost right. on the equator. Right. Mm -hmm. So why would you cycle them? 
Yeah. Right. All right. That's the first thing point. because they're getting 365 pretty much, you know, all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The problem is the altitude. So right. when you account the altitude into that, now you have temperature drop, right? So what happens when you drop temperature, say, for instance, when you're incubating a clutch of eggs? It's not no good. Usually, well, not necessarily, but they not just take longer to hatch. Things slow right. down. Yeah, yeah it slows down. Depends on hatch, depending on the drop, right? right? Mm-hmm. So if like you incubate at eighty eight and they hatch at sixty days, and you incubate at eighty four and they might go seventy, you know, right? That kind yeah. of stuff. For sure. All right. So think about it with age. Why would it be any different? You know. So if if they're if they're growing slower, then wouldn't they be developing slower? Yeah. Maturity. So if you go to what traditionally happened with bolans, is people get them, they spend a lot of money on them, they try to breed them for like five years, and then they get frustrated and sell them. A lot of times they're overfed. Um, a lot of times they're kept in the wrong environment anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as I know, the animals that have reproduced have been nine, 10, 12 years or older, as mm-hmm. far as right. I know. So I think that's the key. It's just people haven't kept them long enough. Right. Yeah, and that and makes that, sense. Yeah, I mean that that actually I never thought about it like that with the being at a lower temperature all the time results in slower development. Everything slower, slower growth. Like yeah, slower everything. You know that they yeah, eat that, like it. You know, sporadic, more sporadically, take longer right. to digest. You know, sit longer. Uh, they do everything slower. You know, right. so that that would make sense that reproduction would also be slower. Right. I think that's yeah. the case with a lot of species, though, that they could, you know, given them extra time before you. Yeah. Um, it's probably going to do more, have more benefit than, than drawing. Usually out. my stuff is four years, sometimes mm-hmm. five, depending, you know, before. Unless there's just an animal that, that takes off and she's three and she looks like she's developing. And I mean, that's like. It, it happens, you know, but uh, it's not the norm by any means. Right. And kind of let's go back to this feeding thing for a minute. Because yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. You brought up a good point a minute ago about a lot of people assume that, like, when you say, well, I'm not going to overfeed, that you'll just slow down the rate of feeding. You're still giving right. them this, like, huge item for right. the yeah. system to digest. You know what I mean? So that's kind of not the point. Um, point would be is to get something through the system of the animal as fast as possible mm-hmm. which is why i feed smaller meals like the, the smaller rats have less gut load of all the bad stuff that really happens and i try to mm-hmm. supplement it with with fish um the, the ocean and both here here and south Carolina yeah, are yeah, really yeah close so i uh, just cast net me some mullet you know oh, wow. rinse them freeze them off there you and, go do that uh, for your neurodia like, buddy the blackheads love them, and not the, it doesn't really change anything with the blackheads, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's, it doesn't really. It's not a messy event usually. <laughs> yeah, well, it's also a lot leaner. In there. Right. Yeah, I can. I'd, I'd imagine the leaner, leaner meals probably do them more favors too. Yeah, and I'm feeding, um, you know, every few days, realistically. Mm-hmm. I mean, these animals will be out and about all the time looking. So are you giving them like one rat like every yeah. couple of days? Or are you giving them yeah. like a couple of small rats? Every no, couple? just like one. Just one? Okay. So through the week, like if they end up with three small rats, that's the equivalent to eating a large for the most part. Or, right. Or mm-hmm. large medium, you know. <laughs> um, so I kind of look at it like that. Instead of, instead of giving it to them all at once, I right. just space it out. Right. And do you have males and females on different schedules or are they on the same? They're all on the same, same schedule. Course. They do yeah. the same thing. I stopped feeding in like October. The drop, like the temperature starts, mm-hmm. you know, waning around then, you know, November. Usually introduced on Thanksgiving, personally, Christmas sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, just depending on what the animals are doing, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I leave them until I see ovulations. And it's weird because I've got two clutches hatched, I've got a clutch I'm waiting on. I've got two females that look like they're heading towards an ovulation. They're like sitting upside down, all blown up and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, it's been a weird season. You know, it's like mm-hmm. strange. 
Yeah, that's odd too, because we've I mean we've got plenty of friends that that like one year they'll have an awesome year where they'll produce a ton of stuff, and then the following year is just an absolute train wreck. <laughs> and then like nothing has changed, yeah. but yeah. for whatever reason, it's just yeah. like this sort of ping ponging of of stuff. Well, the animals change, you know, yeah, they, no. from a day to day basis. They yeah. they do what animals do. Sometimes they need a break. That's why I give my girls off. I don't breed girls mm-hmm. every year. Mm-hmm. Just try to stay up. Just alternate it. Yeah, that's kind of the route I've, you know, envisioned for myself going is like a year on, year off, you know. I've heard too many horror stories of trying to breed females too many years in a row. And it's like, I don't really need to produce that many animals. So, yeah, nah, I mean, make them year on, year off, and they'll be just fine. So I'm not, I'm not like personally, like just trying to produce blackheads just to produce blackheads. You know? Right. And I'm, I'm usually like very focused. I have kind of a direction with my own lines that I've worked on over mm-hmm. almost mm-hmm. two decades now. You know? So, and it makes it a little different kind of market than just, you know, so and so is blackheads or whatnot. You know, right. Right. it's a very focused kind of thing. And, and it's good for like my customer base too. You know? So, I, that's, I kind of always are looking out for, for that kind of thing too, just making sure that they feel comfortable with. And they're happy with their investments, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, right. they're not cheap. Right. You know? So and the last thing I want to do is overproduce stuff. And, right. But my whole attitude is it with like you hear the expression, like, you know, your customers become your competition, but I look at it more like I want my customers to become my partners. Right. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, well, you almost kind of have to be when you're dealing with something like, like that yeah. where, you know, the demand is there, but the supply is not. And, right. You know, right. in order to get these things into the hands of more people who are genuinely interested in them, you kind of have to have more people producing them and working with them. So it's kind of like right. you got to you you get there first. There are, there's more and more guys, but, you know, there's like it's just, uh, you know, lines that have been around a while and they just have blackheads and they're just producing. Yeah. Just producing blackheads. There are some guys, you know, Jason and mm-hmm. Jim Sargent and uh, Jordan. Get it? I think you know he's got some mm-hmm. got some good stuff. A couple of my customers, Trey Moore, uh, Joseph Carlton, he's got some really nice mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, there are guys you know that are that are working on on it. Yeah, improving. I didn't know Sergeant was working with them. I've, I don't oh, yeah. know. Like I've I've I remember. So I'm familiar with him through. He really pioneered the Swiss line here. Oh yeah, he also was the guy who was who was. I don't know if he still is or not, but he was heavy into like the you know the the morphs and copperheads and and yeah, all uh, the venomous like, and, stuff. and stuff. Yeah, so I don't, I, rattlesnakes. I don't know if he's still doing any of that stuff or not, but that's yeah. That's, whenever time yeah. I see hear or see his name, that's the first thing I think of. But I didn't know he was doing aspidus. Yeah, no, too. he's had blackheads for years. As, as long as I've been into him, he's had them for sure. He's Do you remember the, the first thing. year you paired him? First year you you bred blackheads, two thousand five season. And how did that go? Like, no, what was your 2006 first two thousand six season? Sorry. Uh, oh, I had three clutches, uh, two hundred percent hatch rates, and the other clutch, uh, it, there was just too many eggs in the container. It was a really big clutch from a female that died mm-hmm. like a few seasons later. Actually, so it's like eighteen eggs or something. Wow. Big clutch for a blackhead, like big clutch. But she was nine feet, and then like you know, that big round. Like she, mm-hmm way too big um and i lost a couple of those just because they were close to the top and they got wet and whatnot but they you know they hatched um i modified my incubation just again you know looking at the habitat and thinking like what would these animals be doing you know like most of the blackheads especially the westerns you know there's no moisture in the environment where yeah. they're at you know so why would i put moisture in the in the egg container makes no sense mm-hmm. you know like so i incubate with no moisture whatsoever nothing None. Wow. yeah i've learned my lesson with that with like it's <laughs> <laughs> and have you changed anything else as far as that over the years with breeding them have you you know changed your temperatures at all or no. doing anything different no. i you know i have experimented with incubation uh i've incubated like as high as 92 and i've been as low as 84 and uh, the only thing i notice is like uh, they just the days, you know, 92, mm-hmm. you get like 55 days, 84 
where you're going to get like 70, 75 days. You know? yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing I notice that helps the most, uh, I use an air airtight containers, you know, like yeah. the storage food type ones. Mm-hmm. Right, you know? um, and I put holes like a like a quarter inch, not a quarter yeah, like a quarter like eight sixteenth, yeah, on each side and on the top, and I cover it with tape. Mm-hmm. So when I get to it, and I put the eggs in on light grate, paper towel underneath to soak up any moisture because it, it does they they sweat a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why you don't need to add moisture. They produce enough. I mean, it's nuts. They probably produce two cups of moisture during incubation. I would say it's nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, so around day 45 or so, I usually just take the tape holes off so they can breathe a little bit. They do fine. The huh. That's great. Pretty easy. Well, talking about, you know, you said you had that big female. So I've, I've always kind of looked at blackheads very similar to, you know, rhino rats next. No, uh, <laughs> carpets, carpets, more specifically coastals, you know, coastals, you know, you know, me coming into carpets at a younger age, I always heard co- coastals were these massive, the mythical 10 foot, these coastal. massive snakes, you know, and, I've seen some and, and we've yeah. seen them, you know, everybody has, wild. so well, it's like, so I, uh, I've always seen blackheads <laughs> as like, can they get this big? Yeah, absolutely. Should they get that big? Not necessarily. You know, I could be wrong on that, but based on what you're saying, it sounds like not. And we're going to see one. if I cannot get bit. We're going <laughs> to see one. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Seriously, dude? <laughs> he's already pinned himself between the hide box and the light bulb, so he's pushing up on the box. Now I nice. can get the box of under the light bulb. Come on, you freak. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I think of like blackheads, I think of P and Cody's. And that thing's satanic, man. That, that, thing, that thing's the worst. <laughs> That's the worst blackhead. And Cody's like, I hate that snake. <laughs> He's like, take it home. I hate it. I'll take it. Shit. What are you doing? Everything you don't want him to. I, really? <laughs> it's gonna come out of here like hellfire. All right. So this is an adult. Oh Ooh. man, that thing is nice. Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah. But he's you know five and a half feet. Maybe. I can't. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's everything's reversed bike. on here. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. yeah, that's manageable. Yeah. And Maybe how about old? the size of a not a not the big Coke can, but the other Coke yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean my females aren't much bigger. They're actually they're usually shorter and squattier. Hmm. You know, a little a little thicker. Yeah. Shorter and the males are usually a little longer and leaner. That's really interesting. How old is that it's animal just, in particular? That one, he's like seven. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Something like that. Where they have it, folks. To... Blackheads don't have to be nine feet long. <laughs> they don't what have to be. Mean? They shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been to Australia a few times, seen you know some animals, been in you know, collections. Denver and Troy's place. I couldn't believe how big their animals were. You've you've mm-hmm. been there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my God! And, uh, well, I used uh, to, I've been I, friends with those guys since way before. Like, dude, I I feel that. side note. I feel horrible for Troy right now. I'm friends with him oh, on man. Facebook. I don't I don't know him by any personal stance, but he's, he's going. Had some, he's going had some through rough it. times, man. Yeah, it's been. It was sad because I I loved their YouTube channel. I loved watching them, yeah. but like they are pretty much the reason I saw these blackheads that were just massive. They were huge. Well, look, the like, locale that the, the locale that they have, to be fair, is close to human habitation, so they do get quite large because they do mm-hmm. have like a diet of all the feral cats, mammal type stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, um, but you know, Denver did it. He did admit to me that he. Basically, like overfed, just like, overfed them until not breeding. Oh um, wow! 
he would have animals, you know, that they would breed their first year or second year, and then they would just not do anything ever again. You know? Wow. And that's common. Right? That's common with a lot of keepers. Yeah. You know? That female I told you about, she laid two clutches. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and she never did anything ever again. Mm -hmm. I ended up, actually, I gave some I gave some blackheads to uh, Edisto. So if you were ever there and saw the blackheads. Oh, really? I actually, I remember seeing their blackheads there. Yeah, I gave those to them. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Not funny. Yeah. They were old, like, like I said, old retired breeders. That, yeah. They're probably, they're probably even gone. I mean, she was, she lived a long time, you know, with me not doing anything. Yeah. Hmm. A lot of times that's happened. I've gotten animals on breeding lawn from guys. Hey, can you see this? Can you, you know, I've got this female, the male died. And then I would see the female and it looked like a damn, it looked like a blood python and a blackhead uh, costume from Halloween. You know what I mean? Like a nine foot blood. If you can imagine what that looked like. Oh, like Jeez, no grief. wonder. And then good. they would be in my collection like, a, you know, six months, a year and a half, two years before they would die. Yeah, that's but that's sad. animals that I have here. I mean, the first blackhead I ever hatched, and she's laid since she was three years old every other year consistently up until now. You know, like it's fine. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, she, she, she's a great animal. Like of all of them, I mean, that's I've I traced down like some of the oldest animals in zoos that they had record of, and the oldest I could find anywhere was 22 years. And I had an animal here that was 24, and she laid eggs at 23. Wow. Um, yeah. That's incredible. So, yeah. And she lived a long time. She Originally, she came, she was in Dick Gergen's collection. Mm -hmm. And I think she was a wild-caught animal because she had, like, like knob tail and, like, broken ribs. And, like, Jeez. she was in rough shape. Um, mm. And Greg... Yovan got her from Dick. I got her from Greg. I talked to Dick about it. Dick remember the animal and said that yeah, that they were it was probably a ball caught animal. <laughs> they, man, back in the day they were getting all kind of stuff. And oh, I know yeah. that I know that one of the only verifiable Western lines uh, came from the Perth Zoo via trade through Tom Schultz and Dick ended up with those animals. And couple of them ended up in Europe. Uh, one of those animals originally started the Swiss line. So it's kind of like it runs kind of full circle, you know. Yeah. Like most of this stuff, it's only a very few things that, I mean, I know there's undocumented animals, but you can right. go back to, to Saidi's website and look at, you know, stuff by species and see what was brought in. Mm -hmm. So there were things all, all the way up until the 90s that, that were brought in that made it into uh, captive captive stuff. So what's the deal with babies and getting those going? What seems to be the sort of the, the missing link there? You know, I think it has to do with water retention. Um, I think that these animals in the bush, obviously, I haven't had... I mean, every once in a while, you'll have an animal that'll stick around in the egg, and he'll soak up a lot, and he'll crawl out. And he'll be so bloated that, like, you know, and it hasn't happened to me in a really long time, you know, because I've kind of curbed that with being venting mm -hmm. the eggs over over the course of the last fifteen days or so. Um, but I notice, like, if they don't hatch with the bloated bellies, like, if they they definitely feed a lot easier. Um, so like one or two assist feeds and they're on their way. Mm -hmm. So do you have, do you usually tougher. have do you usually have to assist feed all of them no matter what? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, wow. I've had like one out of a hundred, I think. You know, I think I'm. I was hoping to hit sixty clutches this year, but uh, I didn't. I ended up with fifty eight. <laughs> so uh -oh. not this, but just total. You know, mm -hmm. right, right. I'm over five hundred babies now. So. Wow. wow. It's kind of yeah, that's awesome. That's but crazy yeah, I mean, though. I like, I had no idea they were so difficult as as babies. That blows my mind. Yeah, I mean, it's like the tangerine animals, for example. Like they they feed pretty good. Like thirty percent of them. Every once in a while, one of them will go. Like I said, but about thirty percent of them after the first assist, they're like 
they got it figured out in their own way. And then the rest of them are pretty easy. The Westerns can be a pain in the ass. Just mm -hmm. uh, They're just completely different in that regard. They're a lot more flighty, way more defensive, so it's hard to actually assist them and leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. move for like 20 minutes at a time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then down that road with Condros. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we've all yeah. grabbed it. I've, I've literally had it to where like my tongs are like hanging off of the tub. They grab the mouse and I won't even move the tongs. Just like leave it's it. Even worse. You can <laughs> Don't move a muscle. You know. Like, uh, yeah. There was one night doing Condros. I had to piss so bad, but they did grab it, and I was like, I can't. <laughs> what do? Yeah, I was like, what do I just piss? Yeah, and, and you got fifty <laughs> animals do I, to do. You know, yeah, exactly. Animals, yeah, no thanks. I'm cool. Yeah, that's crazy. I would rather keep the quality high and the quantity low. Absolutely. Know, like that's kind yeah. of more of my focus. So with your assist feeding, is that you know simply getting the head of a you know a pinky or fuzzy into the yeah. mouth and then yeah. dropping it? You know, just let them get it in their mouth, like the teeth in, and I just uh, go with the smallest thing I can find, pinkies. You know, okay, pinkies, and yeah. I use a plastic spoon. Mm -hmm. Just the plastic spoon, they'll automatically kind of, uh, and I just stick yeah. it in, and then with the thumb, just slide the pink in, oh. and it fits the entire cavity of the mouth, so they okay. don't have any like, like blackheads will projectile like hoppers, you know what I mean? Like they'll spit on four <laughs> feet, like that. <nah>. No <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. The whole thing being lodged in the mouth, they don't have the momentum to get it out of there, so they have no choice but to swallow it. Right. And I just do it a few times a week, and I just go through them and just, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, and they are like, ah, they, yeah. they just swallow it. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a system, you know. It's like mm -hmm. anything else. It's like yeah. you just have a system for it. Yeah. That's I've cool. never even thought of the spoon thing. That makes complete sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy. I don't like, so I don't just, even you try to come in from the side and just kind of, and no, they I just, just touch them up. right mm -hmm. by their heat pit. Mm -hmm. and they, 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 eh, they'll open right up. Uh, right yeah. <laughs> I've, I've tried assist feeding whole, whole prey before with like smaller rat snakes and stuff, and I can never get it to go down. I've, I've given up on that because it's like, well, without just, pinky pump, man. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah. it's all about the gut load anyway. I, I think that's what it comes down to. It's like once the gut load gets going, I know like yogurt works, you know, for some species, mm -hmm. like to get kickstart that whole thing. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I remember as a kid when, when my dad and I were breeding corns for the ones that weren't eaten, we just have a syringe and just like feed an egg, like a raw egg and fill a yep. syringe up and pump <laughs> it in there. And that seemed to work pretty well for some of them. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Are you breeding your own feeders at all, or what's the... No, I get them from a guy here locally, both places. It's like just local. I try to keep it local. Mm -hmm. Nice. I wish we had a local rodent supplier, <laughs> but we don't. Nobody there? I say, I, say as we're, us? I say as we're trying to breed our own I was going to say, we're breeding... You know, we're Look, dude, I figured there'd be somebody in Charleston, at least. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there is. Yeah. At that point, though, I may as well get... May as well See, at them. least with the price of gas right now, you might yeah, as well just get them shipped. Yeah, brutal. Yeah. I just dropped nearly a grand on filling my freezer the other day, and it hurt my soul dearly. <laughs> but, hey, you know it's better to do it all at once. You know? Yeah, and that's that was kind of my thought process by it. I was like, man, I and I because I literally just got a rodent order like three months ago, and I was like, good grief, like I can't be reing up already, so. I just, I ordered a boatload, man. I got like 200 extra large mice, you know, because I feed a lot of mice more than anything. I don't like feeding rats. I replaced right. a lot of rats for the carpets with quail. Um, trying to get a lot of those switched over to that. What do you have for carpets? Uh, mostly poplin, poplin carpets. Um, oh, nice. That's pretty much the entirety. I have a pair of coastals. Uh, just a, I, I'm all about normals. I, I breed pretty much everything I have is what wild type. Freak. I think everything nice. I have is wild type as far as carpets. Yeah. 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 You don't every, have the granites no, and stuff. No, I don't have granites or exantics anymore. I got out of all that. Everything I have is just wild type, <laughs> wild type pop wins, wild type pop wins, and those pair of wild type coastals. And uh, nice. yeah, should be getting, hopefully getting two carpet clutches next season. At least I'm going to try for it. And then I, I have a ton of colubrids now. So 
Um, yeah, no, the carpets are great. Those are the yeah, first species, cool. first we'll species to, I ever bred. So we'll have to try to make a plan to hook up. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like when I'm traveling back from up here or down there or vice versa, you know, mm -hmm. stop in. And yeah, man, you say that you say the word, and I'll I'll, I'll be ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if, if you like any herping, I also got some good spots around here. We can. Uh, oh, good. Do yeah, some yeah, yeah. do some field stuff. Yeah, do you get? Do you have any time to get out and do any of that? Where I do. Well, was during COVID, man, that was the thing. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great great way to social distance, yeah, and kill we, some time. Yeah. yeah, totally. So we, my wife and I, we like that's like our favorite pastime. Nice. To go with. And, uh, you know, that's funny. Wow. Me and my wife went. It was. Uh, I, we didn't. We were childless for an evening. And it was like <laughs> nine thirty or ten, and I was like, kind of ready to just go to bed. And she's like, "Let's go road cruise." And I was like, "What? No, what? Get in the car, woman!" So we got in the car. We drove around to like one a.m. Man, and all we found, well, I so we saw a little tantilla. How I saw that on the road is still, I don't even get it. But I, I of course, as I saw it, realized it went under the passenger tire, and I killed it. Oh. Uh, ran it over. So that was a bummer. Jeez. That was the only snake we saw. All hey, night. man, it happens, you know. Like, yeah. You know, there was one time it was during, so I, while during when COVID was really bad, I got COVID and I also broke my hand in that process. Ouch. So I was stuck at home with a broken hand, you know, so I, I went road cruising like every day. So I called it my broken handed COVID cruise. Right. Uh, you know, so, yeah. So I was cruising. trying to deal with Nerodia with one hand and all this stuff, trying to take pictures and <laughs> I grabbed, I grabbed this thing, or I was trying to grab it. It kept wiggling all around. I'm trying. It was my right hand that was broken, and I'm right-handed, so I'm trying to grab this thing with my left hand. It was not working, and it went behind my tire, and it was gone. Vanished. It just disappeared. Yeah. I looked yeah. everywhere. I looked up in the truck, in the wheel, all around. I was like, "Where the hell did this thing go?" It was gone. I sat on the side of the road for like ten minutes. Looking for this freaking snake and arm in a sling, just nothing. standing there. Yeah, with flashlight going all around. It was it was terrible. No, but it's funny because Katie was like, "This is like when we were road cruising." She's like, "This is fun." <laughs> she's like, "It's so exciting. I don't know what we're gonna see." <laughs> like, I'm like okay. we, it's like me and Jake are going going out to Okatee at some point to look for some some corn. Yeah, we got some good places in, down in Florida and, and oh, Carolina. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, Jake's got good spots. Yeah, we like Southwest Florida. Is, is great for like the corns over there are, like no oh, yeah mm -hmm. quality really nice. yeah. i love i have a lot of rat snakes from florida and oh man my favorite my favorites are the uh my southern key largo uh to kurtz rat snakes oh man they're they're just fantastic you gotta see this name we've both just given up on pythons for the most part nah. just completely shifted gears to to kaluba oh man yeah. She's in the shed, but oh, oh man. man, yeah, That's buddy. Beast. And the lighting in here is horrible. But thought it was a Jamaican bow at first. Like, yeah, oh, I was like, that. wait, what? This thing is yeah. like it's kind so orange. Just like, if yeah, I sent you yeah. a picture of it, you would be like, wow, like this is not the representation of the color at all. Plus, That's she's in awesome. the shed. But, and yeah, you said a, you had all black yeah. heads. Well, this is uh, that's my. That's my wife. That's uh, I had to replace one for her, and uh, mm -hmm. we re-released the babies back in the same area where the adults oh, nice. were caught. You know, yeah, that's awesome. In Southwest Florida, but that's like that's like Florida's Okatee. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, I love I love Florida. I love the state. It's great, great. Place. Oh, some great stuff here. Yeah, like you can. There's there's different places where you can find like every morph of corn snake that exists yeah. in captivity. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Like up above the lake, man, like there's areas up there where, where five foot corns are common and have no black, like mm -hmm. hypo for better sense of the word, you know, like zero Whoa. black on them, not even Whoa. the belly. Yeah. Just, just that's crazy. Washed out. We'll get some pretty diesel corns around here too. I've found yeah, that area is great. Yeah, I found some. I found some corns that were pushing the the five foot range. Like I mm -hmm. found one out. out of, it's actually on the way to kind of towards Edisto. It's right between 
us in Edisto um, is a WMA. It's a great area. Frequent. Yeah, it's a WMA I frequent all the time. It's called a Donnelly. And yeah. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Yeah, yeah, I, go, yeah, yeah. I go there. I found I found a six and a half foot mud snake out there. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that was that was great. All right, so yeah, here's a crazy story. My wife and I, we were going uh, to see my parents from Florida. We had just driven like, you know, 10 hours up from down there. And uh, we decided like it was right at dusk, right? So mm. we decided to like take this little off road. There's like, it's about a seven mile road paved. And there's like three or four houses at the end. Of right. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, this would be a good road just to cruise. So we turn off this road, main road, Highway 17. There, just before you hit Holly's Island intersection, the first one, and, and of course this is 20 years ago. Um, but we turned out, and it wasn't a hundred yards. Here's a mud snake. Same thing. Got to be five feet. Yeah. I mean, massive. This. Thing. Yeah. The crazy. I got a picture of it, like a glimpse of it. It turned like really quick, and it went towards a hole like that big around, man. It <laughs> itself all the way down in there. But dude. Four feet from the damn concrete. You know what I mean? Like right That's beside amazing. the road. Yeah. See, I've never seen a big one of those. Everyone I've seen it was small. I've never. I've that never was seen a, like an adult adult. That was my right. lifer. So like that was the that that's the one I consider my lifer. The only I've had very infrequent uh, dealings with them. My buddy that I harped with a lot when because we were trying to find a mud snake. He went out one night without me because I was busy found a mud snake i was pissed but i went and, <laughs> I, went, I went and met up with him that's later. all in the case yeah 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 so i went and went blah went and met up with him later and took some pictures of it got to mess with it i was awesome then while i was in georgetown in college somebody came up and was like hey i heard you like snakes and i was like uh yeah they're like you want to see a mud snake and i was like oh yeah <laughs> and they took me outside. They took me outside yeah. and they had just this massive dude. I'm telling you, this kid was taller than me. I mean, he had to be six foot at least. And he was holding this thing above his head to the ground and it was dead. Dead as uh, a freaking door. So dead no, as I a heard freaking you like Come look at this. Yeah, come look at this. Dead yeah, don't you hate it when that happens? It's dude, like, really, man? I was heartbroken. I was like, that animal had to have been so freaking old, man. Like you could just tell. Like it always, yeah. kills me when you see like old the man. massive, like record breaking gators. It's like yeah. they killed it. It's like, man, yeah. like come on. You like, want to yo, see more of that? that you leave is? it a, like let it re live that long yeah. just to have that happen. You know? yeah. yeah. But yeah, then I at Donnelly, I walked this entire trail and not not 50 yards from getting back to my truck i was walking up this hill and there's this massive mud snake thing had to have been pushing six foot man it was huge wow. just laying right there in the path i screamed like a freaking schoolgirl, dude i threw my hat on the ground i was like what is this oh my god <laughs> it was great dude oh man i was going this crazy. Need, i didn't even get any good pictures of it i was so excited. i still get giddy about everything you know oh yeah man something. i go crazy over anything Justin, I sent you a picture of that corn just so you can see the actual color of it <laughs> on Messenger. Um, Damn. Yeah, that's a ripper. Oh. Yeah. Oh, dude. Ooh. That is. Oh. And the locality, <laughs> they, that's where the Xanthix steamed. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's yeah. just wild. It almost looks like it has more saddles than yeah. Than that's other, some like, heavy. I know saddles. it's like busy. That's crazy. So I've been going for that. I don't know if you guys saw the blackhead pictures this this uh, last season, but I've got that male that I pulled out. He's really high band count, and mm -hmm. uh, I bred him with a female that was also very high band count. And man, the babies are like they they have probably a third percent more bands. Than hmm. most of the other blackheads that hatch, you know. That's crazy, <laughs> man. I I absolutely Pretty love cool. I absolutely love that look. Everybody's like really focused on stripes and like everything now, like. Both. But the band well, stripes man, have reduced. I, you yeah, know, like yeah, matter. absolutely. But like, dude, the banded look on anything. Yeah, I'm the same way with carpets. I love banded looking carpets. Right. And uh, yeah. they're just. Justin, there's like little gecko right there yeah, behind I know. your That's sign. Yeah, turkey just gecko. I've been living <laughs> yeah. behind one of the signs on my garage. I just saw caught my eye. I was like, is that cockroach? Is a little gecko? It's uh, like it's a gecko. I've been seeing a bunch of babies, actually, uh, geckos, animals, all kind of stuff. That's a cockroach. It's good. Stuff is thriving. Yeah, yeah. there oh, needs yeah, to be man. more of them in here because there's a lot of bugs. Oh yeah, there's a ton of bugs in here. 
How many Again. like well, how many different lines are there of blackheads in the U.S.? Well, I mean, you think of lines like I've cr I've created a couple of whatnot. You know, there's the mm -hmm. Swiss line, my tangerines. There's Dick Gergen's line of westerns. There's Casey's line of yeah. westerns. You know, like he's pretty well known for his whole story with that thing, mm -hmm. blackheads and whatnot. Um, uh, th there's the zoo line. There's two different zoo lines. Okay, uh, this is more than I thought. For yeah. some reason, I was under the impression that it was almost like Brettles, where there was, you know, only. That's because I feel like a lot of people four. like a lot of the people who have them just like kind of hoard them. They're like, well, know. here's the thing you know? too. You got to understand that's just what we know. You know, well, Casey's animals, or we don't know that, but legally. Mm -hmm. you know, what that that's just like you know just handed down story we pretty much yeah know right. what happened with casey or whatever concerning the, like that stuff but um you know like paperwork wise there's only you know like three three or four different lines mm -hmm. the swiss line animals were started from like i said before dick gergen got some western animals in a trade from Kurt Zoo with Tom Schultz from San Diego mm -hmm. Zoo. I think they maybe for San Zinnias <laughs> rules. I can't remember. Seems, like, seems like a fair trade. The early mid 90s. You know, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so some of those animals ended up in Europe. So George versus Titus, or if you pronounce his best name, uh, had him in Switzerland. But he, the male he used, he got from here in the United States from Joel Rosen. And that's the U.S. zoo line that eventually produced the Atlantics. Mm -hmm. So that's like a Swiss line history. So right. those animals were sold back to the United States. Uh, Joe Robison from Living Jewels got them, along with the Centrillions, the first Centrillions. That were mm -hmm. there. And that whole collection eventually got bought by Casey. Mm. And Casey bred out of those animals for a few years, sold them to various different people, ended up at Rare Earth, which is where one of the first ones changed. Uh, another guy named Dan Reed had another animal that I actually had in my collection for a while that was probably the first color changer, uh, or one of the first. <clears throat> Doug Price also had one that stemmed from animals that were that were like. They were unrelated, but they were half related to the Joel Rosen animals. Mm -hmm. um, so there's kind of a paper trail between between those. Mm. Um, but that line, for example, has infiltrated a lot of different things. You know, they've infiltrated some of the Western lines. It's infiltrated some of the some of the zoo lines. You know, um, not that that's bad. Everything. You know, because you know, there's been some amazing animals. But it's the same thing with anything. I mean, like the tangerine line, my stuff. Most of that is that zoo line stock. Mm -hmm. um, Mark Bell had some animals that came from Germany. Um, I don't know how or what the what the story was about that, but I talked to him at a show when I bought a really high, abnormally high red animal from him. Um, it raised up a pair and ended up using them. Uh, he told me that they were from, the line was from germany that huh. he didn't know anything more than that so hmm. i don't know if that's like a various something that's zoo line related because like what we don't realize is like the zoo line stuff pretty much started all the captive population in every country in the world mm -hmm. you know there was only like you could only get these animals via zoos and there were people that were smuggling them but not like in the early 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 yeah. So, like, when when Hamburg got in the '60s, got their blackheads, and when Fort Worth, Dallas got theirs, and Philadelphia Zoo and Riverbanks, and so forth and so on, all around the world, you know, they, that was it was all the same line of animals. They came, they all came from the same place. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of smuggled stuff. So let's talk about that. You know, you said they're surprised there's so many. Think about how many non proven lines that were brought in right because mm -hmm. let's face it 
when people were smuggling stuff out of Australia, blackheads were fifteen thousand dollars a piece. Woo! Any carpet mm. python was one hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. So what do you think was getting smuggled out of Australia <laughs> the most? There's probably yeah. more blackheads here than any other species out of Australia. I can in hear terms of that. like direct from Australia. Yeah. yeah. Well, via Hank Moult. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, like some of these other guys. Like I'm sure Hank is responsible for you know two or three dozen you know illegal blackheads brought into the country. Mm-hmm. Um, See, and that's always an interesting debate that that you know we and and Casey Cannon have about that kind of stuff is like, are those guys like? It's a weird sort of paradox because it's like, should we be thanking them because we wouldn't have a lot of these species had they not done that? But at the same time, it's like they're a horrible representation of of the industry and like they're they're kind of a, a scar in a sense of of well sort of the history I mean, of it. You know, it's just it's a weird. It, it is yeah. it is a selfish thing, you know, and, and it's an ego thing. I think more than anything involved with like having something that somebody else doesn't, you know. Like I think that played a big part of it in like the early days, you know, like mm-hmm. guys like Crutchfield, you know. And I know Crutchfield now. I'm personal friends with Crutchfield. He, after all these years, you know, he calls me on the holidays and shit. You know, it's like I yeah, never yeah. that one, <laughs> you know. But but he, you know, out of all the turmoil and everything he's ever had in his life, I sat at dinner. With him, and he'd be embarrassed if he even heard this. But he 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 cried his eyes out with my wife. My wife's a therapist, and mm-hmm. for some reason he keyed in on that. He unloaded on her out at dinner one night on the home, the Fourth of July of all things. Mm-hmm. My friend Marty Snipes and his wife and their son came down. We hooked up with him in the day. He invited us out to dinner. Then he offered to pay for it. And Marty looked at me. He's like, "Are we in the Twilight Zone right now? Like this is like the craziest thing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he unloaded his whole life, and this was shortly after Al died and shot at him. And, and mm-hmm. it's like the life that that guy him, he's lived a hundred lives, man. Like mm-hmm. you know, yeah. yeah there's no denying that. Him, that's say that's what you for sure. About him, but the hobby wouldn't be what it is without him, for sure. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of those guys. It's not just him, you know. Right. Some guys were more elegant about it, you know. Some guys write really seedy. Um, man, I try. I, <laughs> I tried to buy some animals from Hank Mole, like in 2000, like right around the light, like the last activity anybody kind of really heard from him. He had a blackhead and a diamond python available, and he sent me a picture of this blackhead. He sent me two pictures. <laughs> uh, one was like on the back of a conference chair that you would see in a hotel room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, like with the hotel kind of desk, and like you could tell it was a hotel room. And <laughs> the other picture was <laughs> this had the same animal, like dumped out of a pillowcase into a Tupperware, but there was like sand <laughs> and all kinds of you could tell, like dumped out of a pillowcase. Like, just, obviously, this animal came like directly from somewhere, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it was like blatantly yeah. obvious, you know. And he agreed to meet up with me, and I waited for him for like three hours. He never showed up. I had, I remember, I had four thousand dollars cash in my hand. I was going to give him for the female blackhead and the female diamond. Jeez, I remember, I remember that. And he never showed up, and that's like one of the last times anybody I I know of has ever heard from him or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But, but I I I mean I know that he had a whole ring of people. There were like guys that were captive hatching blackheads and, and smuggling them out to him, and he was bringing them here. And to Europe, they were going all over the place, you know. Um, yeah, that's, that's I mean, wild. Is it good or bad? I mean, I don't know, you know. Like, we definitely wouldn't have some of the stuff we have if it wasn't for those guys. You know? Right. So that's kind of, like I said, that's that's sort of the, the weird position you're in. It's like... And so look, it's not I, even I, that it needs be mad at them, right? Yeah, you know? I think at this point, like, the way people should look at it is in, like, look... We have the animals we have now. Like, yes, they're they may, here. They may have got here, Shady. Whatever, they're here. Let's just not continue doing it. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's just not do that anymore. But you look, you I know, mean, like what, certainly not condoning that type of deal. 
You know, you're talking yeah. about a point in time where there were no laws about right. any of this. Shit. Well, yeah, you, you know, know that, and that's like, the thing. If it if it was a time when there was outside of certain laws, species. Of, Right. Yeah, know. exactly. You know, but if you're doing this during a time that there were no laws about it, I mean, is it smuggling? You know what I mean? Uh, like it's more so for me, it's the illegal, like straight up illegal importation. The, the, the illegal trade, shady. like, you know, Congros you know? and soda bottles and shit, all of that, you know, yeah. like that, that to me is doing more damage than like yeah. anything. Like Absolutely. Or Casey or some of these other guys, you know? Yeah. Um, well then that's sort of, that's, that's, ties into the whole uh conservation through propagation thing like i think about a lot of the dart frog species we don't have in the states and it's like right yeah probably if, for the you, best. if you get if you get i don't know 50 adults 50 pairs and you bring those into the states within you know a year or two the demand for those smuggled and illegal animals is gonna gonna almost disappear so it's like, why wouldn't we just bite the bullet and get this over with knowing that there's an issue and knowing that in captivity there are people that, that will be extremely successful with them and right. completely wipe out that, you know, it's just, it's so it's so funny. I think about, like, Jamaican boas are a good example of that. It's like, you can't take them out of the wild. Right. No one is, at least that we know of. And even the ones that are captive bred, you can't, they can't leave the state. Right. So. right. You can't sell them, like, you can gift them and stuff like It's It's just so bizarre because it's like we're not dealing with animals that were plucked from jamaica like i don't see people going to jamaica and saying let's go catch some jamaican boas like <laughs> not really a country you want to go running around yeah. in on your own anyways like yeah. it's all a means to an end yeah, you know what right. i mean like human beings we're, we're, we're weird we do strange stuff there's no reason for really any of this <laughs> we're know? gross like, dude we suck <laughs> i mean we do we do some odd stuff and for the sake of ego for the sake of uh prosperity for the sake of uh fulfillment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know uh, and you can't like you can't look at a hobby like this without addressing all of that stuff inside yourself you know like right. all of us have all of those attributes otherwise we wouldn't be doing this right you know so and some of us display it more than others in whatever direction that goes in or whatnot you know um you know for me it's like i've I, I love these animals. They they have names, you know, like these, these animals are my damn friends. They, a lot of yeah. them have been here 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, so for me, it's like, I, I, I try not to push them. I try not to man, try not to demand more out of them than I'm able to yeah, right. you know, create with them, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. so, uh, but everybody's different, you know? Yeah. For sure. I don't know. It's an interesting hobby. If you look at just the, the history of, of the hobby slash industry, man, it's definitely bizarre. I mean, it's bizarre because <laughs> we're keeping the yeah. things that we keep, but it's also just bizarre and how it you know came to be. And someone said, hey, for some reason, people like keeping this species. Let's go get more of them. Yeah. You know, and just yeah. it's just it's, it's a strange but interesting story i mean there's really no need for it after they're in captivity i mean was there a need for people to smuggle blackheads and you know i mean it probably one time there were because people weren't producing them so you couldn't get them you know so there was a black market demand um but once you have an animal i mean why why would you want westerns when we didn't have like quote westerns you know? or why mm -hmm. would you want whatever locale or whatever right well, then there's also sort of the, the side of things where it's like, unless we had everything, you know, in Australia in particular, like people would never be satisfied. Like we could have yeah. all the carpets, even in Bricotta. But because we don't, there's always going to be like those people that are like. Well, itching you know, that's where the morphs come in and all this other that this creating living art, you know, that's what that's that's what makes a ball python so popular, I think, you know, mm -hmm. obviously for the whole, you know, false market of whatever that you know used to be or whatever mm -hmm. is different than it is now but at the end of the day these people are creating living art you know so it's kind of when you look at it like that it's like when i play drums you know i'm creating living art like a real let's say real-time art mm -hmm. right. right 
so it's it's kind of the same thing like the snakes and my collection and what i breathe for is an expression of myself right in the same way that when i sit down behind a set of drums or whatever and i play that's also an expression of myself right yeah you know so i think that's an important part of being a keeper is like understanding that about yourself you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or being a successful keeper at least yeah, I mean, as far as breeding goes and stuff, like that's a that's an aspect of it I didn't really. It's an angle of it I hadn't thought of, right. you know, until now, and that's that is interesting because you, you know, like Jake, we talked about this semi regularly. Like we both like a lot of the same stuff, but we don't keep the same stuff. Right. Like I love right. poplin carpets. I have really no. I've kept poplins in the past. I really don't have any desire to keep them currently, so I like leave that to Jake. But I know right. Jake has his preferences in poplins, and so of course he's going to sort of extrapolate you know, upon that. And same yeah. with like I, the yeah. corns and, and other stuff that I've got. It's like, I, I know what morphs I like and what I really want to pursue and like just toy with for the next indefinite number of years. And like, that is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it is, yeah. it is and it your, own, your own version. I mean, it may not, may not be anything spectacular to begin with, but over time, if you stick at it, just like mm -hmm. with, with instruments or anything else, like the more time you spend, working at right. it and, and the better it becomes and more refined it becomes and right you know yeah. you know i i kind of started with the carpets uh, blood pythons and berms are like the first things that i've read i've had emeralds chondros uh, numerals rainbow boas like all the children's and spotted mm -hmm. and all of that stuff i've kind of worked my way through everything for the most part but Blackheads is what I find myself like just it's what really does it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a big part of it of, of being, you know, we we just talked about that last week was like the whole jack of all trades or you know, master of none kind of thing. It's like you do over time sort of find what you like and you you realize that and you kind of tend to sort of funnel it down to yeah. to that as you get older, I think as well. And sure. Yeah. You know, it's just you you realize what your comfort level, you know, your time management level, like how much of your, your week do you want to sink into, you know, whatever species, you know, cause some do need more attention than others. And right. It's uh, you know, when one of them, I'll give you a, I'll give you a selling point for black heads, right. Something that I've noticed um, after keeping carpets and specifically jungles. Right. So, you know, how long has it taken? for jungle carpets to get to a point, you know, where if you had nice looking adults that you would be pretty sure that all the babies would be end up being mm -hmm. nice adults. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I mean, that took damn near 40 years. Right. Yeah. And like for some, for some reason, the information, the genetic information transfer when you're live breeding for carpets is fairly slow. Right. Mm -hmm. With blackheads, it's not like that. Like you can take an animal, for example, that has a couple of orange spots on its chin and breed that back to the mother. And the next generation is like half the chin is gone. And then you breed it wow. back to the mother, one of those babies to the mother within two generations. You've got an animal that's got 50% reduction. You know, oh, wow. so like there's something about yeah. the potency of the genetics with the blackheads. I don't know if that's because there were initially so many different animals brought smuggled in because they were they were so expensive you know mm -hmm. um so it's a little different than like carpets for example you know they didn't have as much genetic diversity brought in yeah um well i think that's so, that's the big reason why pop wins are starting to really take off and i mean we're still not even scratching the surface i think on those but the fact we, that you have access to to imports and and wild caught yeah. animals to out there are some put people though things, man you know. like craig woods and there's yeah, man, Craig is doing some freaking phenomenal stuff. Have you seen the ones that I had on my website? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I haven't. It's uh, Derek Roddy's blackheadedpythons.com. But look at the other pythons or other species page and look through there and uh, check out some of those. That's some really yeah. gold ones that were like super yellow and really gold. Yeah, yeah. Really nice ones. And they're yeah. all wild caught, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're. In fact, I had a. One of the males that I used was I got from Ben Siegel. It was a wild caught animal, and I dude, I saw hundreds of them come in through Ben's because he was literally two miles down the street. Anytime wow. he'd get a shipment of stuff, he'd call me like, "Hey, you want to come look at these carpets before I put 
<laughs> so I would go and I would collect all kind of good stuff, you know, from him. That's awesome. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Boy, what? Woo! Oh! Ooh. Oh, Derek, where? Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> Where what happened to those? <laughs> um, what what happened? They that ended is... up, you know, during that time period when I was breeding those, I was touring a lot. So if I had babies, yeah. a lot of times I just wholesaled them to Ben. So like if if you ever got anything from Ben that turned out like really high yellow or really not gold like that, it most likely it came from me. Oh my God, um, even those doomerals, dude. Oh my god. I've never seen any like that. Yeah, that's that Dobros was a local animal, uh the person on Craigslist in Florida that I happened to see it. I was like, is it me or is that the best looking drum I've ever yeah, seen? Yeah, well it's also <laughs> I mean, it almost, it almost, it almost so, had like a hypo aspect to it. Like, yeah. So I picked that up, I posted it, I immediately started getting like three and four thousand dollar offers for it. Oh my. And this guy, Paul Messefell, hit me up out of the blue and was like, hey, man, I've got some females that look like that if you want to do a breeding along. So I ended up sending him up to him. This guy has got, can't even talk about the stuff he has, like doing as well as wise, like stuff you've never seen. You right. know, like he's, he's the real deal when it comes to doing as well as anything Madagascar, actually, Sanzinias, Green mm -hmm. Sanzinias. He's got a lot of the good stuff. Mm hmm. Is there anything? A lot of keepers doing great stuff. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Is there anything you want to keep, but due to time or space, you just you you never have? Honestly, at this point, not really. Not really. I mean, the only thing that like I really want to do is I want to set up um, just a dedicated building mm -hmm. and have a hybrid indoor outdoor setup where mm -hmm. animals could leave their indoor caging to outdoor oh, you know yeah, whatever, that they, would be, whatever they wanted you know yeah that would be awesome um that's kind of like I, i'm not really so much care about the species aspect of it you know because i mean at, at this point man i've had everything I mean, mm -hmm. venomous to bowas pikes colubrids i mean i had so much stuff over the years i'm 50 years you know this coming year is august so and growing up with it, like I said, with my mom and dad, like, you know, just being mm. rescued from people. Mm -hmm. and I've always had stuff. So it's like I kind of work my way through everything, you know. Yeah. I'm yeah. Pretty content. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 a, good, exactly that's a good place to be. That's, exactly what I was getting at last week was yeah. like over time, you kind of, you know, you taste a little bit of everything and you, you figure out what you like and you gravitate towards it. And I live vicariously through some of my other friends. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like Keogan, oh, yeah. he was a, uh, he, he was a good resource for that because he had everything, you know, he had a little bit of everything. He was successful with everything. So, um, so that's cool, you know, you're yeah. to have that because you, kind of, you can go over and like see all of this stuff at their place. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of <laughs> like, again, why Justin and I, I feel like Justin and I work, you know, just so well together with the stuff that we keep. Cause like I can appreciate all the morph stuff. I have very few morph projects. I have one corn morph project and then some pituophis you know, two, two albino projects. Um, but no you know, I'm really not into the morph stuff as much. You know, I like my wild types, I like my locality. I gotta be and, honest. If I right. didn't, if I didn't hatch the stuff here, if it didn't show up randomly is I would definitely not spend the money on it. You know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, for sure. A gamble. It's half yeah. the reason why I didn't bite into the albinos. Cause that, that whole line has been littered with issues. Yeah, yeah I remember many, hearing so. something about that. Maybe I was on NPR or something else that they're yeah, just, they, they're uh, problematic. Yeah, something's going on there. Yeah. It's, the, it's like, you know, it's like the wobble and jags and spiders or the yep. one eyed albino boas or, yep. you know, the kinking and the zebras. Mm -hmm. and, you know, people say, oh, you can breed it out, but you can't. They've been trying to breed the one eyed thing out of albino boas for three decades now it's it's <laughs> called a mutation it. for a reason <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. I mean, if they were going to they would have by now yeah like yeah everybody likes to call them morphs you know to kind of downplay it yeah, like, yeah it's, it's a, a mutation a, dude you're gonna get mutation. you're gonna get you're gonna get, weird, you're gonna get weird shit from it like it's just so that seems to be the is. thing with the albinos with the blackheads like there's a lot of like um well, I mean, Keoghan has hatched a couple of clutches now and just had the like, the rest of the clutches fine, and then the albinos crawl out and die 24 hours later. 
Huh. And then the funny. ones that have lived have, you know, they they were very young and passed. You know. mm -hmm. So I don't know. It would be a cool thing to see the fruition. You know, I know yeah. Jason's got some hats. Tom Kyogen's got some hats. I mean, so you know, it would be cool to see the fruition. But mm -hmm. the Xanthics that hatch here, you know, the tigers that I have with the black stripes on their back, they, you know, that hatched here. Mm -hmm. Do you see much of a change as far as hatchlings, like in terms of like pattern and color development from from hatching to when they get older, or are they pretty much as they are when they come out? You know, here's the thing. Um, you know, most blackheads they brown over. You know, uh, this is why I always tell people when they're looking for, looking for, you know, when they're looking to buy babies and they really want like the best of the best, and I say, well, always go and look at the parents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the parents oh, are going to yeah. give you an eye. And I don't care how good a baby looks. I mean, you may have one that will turn out to be exceptional, but, you know, most of the time they're going to they're gonna resemble or be close to the parent. Right. Yeah. So I always have strived for the best adults, you know, mm -hmm. like getting animals that are like truly highly contrasted. See if this girl doesn't eat me. <laughs> Bye. You must make the blood sacrifice. <laughs> this is this is a four year old western, so but Oh my god. I mean look at that, Ooh. you know? That so, is incredible. They're just giant brown tree snakes. I love it. Oh my gosh. Giant irregularis night tigers. That is beautiful. Yeah. Right? Well, she, you know, she's not that big. She's five feet. But yeah. And when they do decide but, to grab you, do they do the Woma thing and just hold on? Yeah, until I have to keep off? some Jack Daniels or something <laughs> around to, <laughs> to keep them from getting crazy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's the key. Like, you know, the best adults are going to make the best babies. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Quality know, in, quality out. Really 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 have strived for you know yeah um, are you planning to go to daytona do you get to daytona i, mean, I, I go i don't vend like mm -hmm. i don't produce enough animals man it's right like, i can yeah. i produce enough like i take an inventory year two years in advance with my customers or people just feeling people out what what are people going to be looking for from me specifically i don't really mm -hmm. think about like the blackhead market so to speak but what are people looking for from me? Um, and I focus on that and, you know, just smaller numbers, like I said, higher quality. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah for sure. Um, I just think that's the, that, that's the way to go to try to achieve that. You know, I keep a lot of stuff back, you know, just always keeping the best stuff. And it's kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of a, I'm better now. <laughs> you know, I need, there needs to be an AA for black head effects because I've had up to like 300 at one time, you know. Whoa, it's good <laughs> grief. Ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Not, do you, so do you try to hold on to a certain amount of holdbacks per clutch and then do you kind of sit on them for an extended period of time before you decide whether they stay or go? I used to, but now I know what I'm looking at. Okay. Most, yeah. Like, I was going to say something like really strange. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll hang on to it. But. Yeah. I was going to say it's kind of similar with like, pop wing carpets you know i tell a lot of people you know especially your first few years and i haven't learned like what babies are going to turn out nice you know but right. so i tell a lot of people with pop wings hold on to them man because that little dinker of a baby could turn out to be the most amazing thing you've ever seen that's why i like yeah. Andros, you know, is like but, you just don't know you yeah. just got to guess and hope but, you know, with guys like Eric Burke, who have produced so many pop wins, you know, he can see, oh, yeah. he knows which ones out of the egg are going to be nice looking, you know. Right. Like, yeah, he, yeah, can, yeah. he can just yeah. see it, you know, and you just have it. Me, I, yeah, I can see the obvious ones. Like, okay, this one's going to be a screamer, you know. And I've kind of got a natural eye for it, too. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you look, at at them, you look at enough of them over oh, time, you definitely God. see the, 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 the detail, like the minor stuff that maybe – would have been overlooked otherwise. That's amazing. Yeah, that's killer. Oh my gosh. Has anybody bred to try and try and make the, the actual black part of the head and the neck go down farther? Like uh, okay, so here's the thing. Um, a longer sock, if you would. Yeah. <laughs> longer sock. There are certain localities 
So like the westerns on that grill that I uh, just had out, you'll notice that it's really short. Let's see if I can get her back out. Come here, you can be a psycho. Come here. Hey. <laughs> I mean, it seems like you should just have some some ring pythons and call it a day. Ah, uh, no, um, <laughs> not <laughs> nearly as cool. Hey. But see the, how short yeah it is. Where's she at? Get in frame. Anyway, there it is. Looking uh, for fingers. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, but like the the original zoo line animals that grow the exanthics like they're they're black it stands like three inches down four inches down from the hmm. boat where that is only like an inch yeah right. so it's like a locality thing right um let me show you this this popped up in my collection and this is like a favorite of a lot of people's uh, are you gonna be a lunatic let's see So I feel those are probably the worst because those are like face level. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, you got to love those face level cages, man. Wow. Woo. Ooh. Oh, buddy. Solid black stripe. Yeah. So these are the tigers, right? So you wanted to know about, you know, extending black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what's that, going on. That's, stops. that's yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Let's call them black body See. pythons. That looks like something old Billy Hunt would like. Yeah. <laughs> Him and his striped yeah. fish. Yeah, I know, man. Those other ones, those first ones you're pulling out, those were the ones that really rustled my jimmies, man. Those, yeah, well, that yeah, that, that, that know, banding, man, is just, oh, that's clean, just incredible. Clean animals, so you know? clean, so clean. Oh, adults. My that's yeah. what you want to see. Show yeah. me the adults. That's That should be the, the first thing you ask anybody when buying blankets. Yep. Show me the adults. Show me the money. <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> hey, Black, you know, they've been very good to me, man, over yeah. the years. You know, like, it's kind of the thing. Like, when you specialize in something, too, you kind of you develop, like, a different kind of audience, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So it's neat. You know, it's a, just a great hobby. and Yeah. Really enjoy it. All the people I've met, like, being able to do this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Very glad to have you on. And now I have to Share start. Share information. Now I have to start putting money to the side for the next two years to get some get some blackheads. Hey, kidneys, uh, <laughs> it's pretty good going right for kidneys right now. Hey, so. that might, uh, might, well, might you can find them. There, there, there's plenty of guys. Like if you're just looking to get a pair or whatever, you, they're, yeah, they're affordable mm -hmm. for the most part. For at least I think they are. You know, for, yeah, for what you're getting out of them, right? You know, yeah, so mm -hmm. spend a few thousand dollars, and even if you breed them once, you like you're going to triple your money. You know, mm -hmm. right. even conservative. So. Right. Yeah. I still think they're the best investment python in the market. Like, there's nothing has held its value. I mean, I produced my first ones in 2006, and I'm selling them for more. Oh wow! wow. Because <laughs> I developed my own lines and stuff. But even even not like regular blackheads from from anybody, you know, like they're still the same price as they were 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blackheads are not. They have not fallen off on that price, man. They're they're, they're not easy out there. No, they're not. Oh, well, I think it also kind of goes back to the the brettles thing. Like the only reason, in my opinion, that brettles aren't way more popular than they are is because they don't have all the crazy patterns and colors that you get with with other Morelia. You know, yeah. that, right? That sort of well, hindered. that and uh, the idea that like you know they take longer to mature. That's yeah. the thing to try for people. Jesus Christ, um, man! I I hate that. I hate because I I so I'm with you like you know I've heard a lot of people with like oh you can breed females at three I I don't do that I have three year old females that look like a lot of people's one year olds you know yeah. like I I just I don't I don't feed heavily but all my snakes are very toned they're very healthy weight and like body to by me, brats to me they're good you know and <laughs> and at the far at the five year mark yeah they'll probably be big enough to go and that's fine. Yeah, I'm oh, not there, in a hurry. I mean, that's the one thing. Patience. Like yeah. that's the one thing that every successful keeper has in common is patience. Yes. Absolutely. Because you know? I think I've been personally, I think age is one of the most important factors in breeding and is being mature, you <clears> know, and, and yeah. being able to do that, you know. And 
I'm lucky because I get to spend a lot of time with my stuff, you know, given mm-hmm. my my job description and whatnot. So, um, you know, for me, I'm very meticulous and I'm very neat, like a, you know, uh, detailed as far as that's concerned. So, mm-hmm. like, this is kind of like naturally a good hobby for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So we are yeah. almost at two hours, but we had a debate in the group chat last night or the night before and i have to ask what's the best metallica album <laughs> i mean for me personally yeah ride the lightning thank but... you <laughs> thank you that's exactly what i said oh yeah, ride oh, yeah, the, yeah. Ride the mean, lightning is it for me man yeah. um i mean master of puppets though it, it i think that was the one that that really like connected them with the public yeah. you know like that and not like in that not like in that commercial way that happened later on the black album mm-hmm. you know? yeah, like, like they, didn't, they, they hadn't they hadn't thing. sold out yet <laughs> well i mean i wouldn't look at it as sold out i would just yeah. look at like, like we were talking about in the herb industry you know like you yeah. grow you know yeah, and your taste sure. change and things you know you might have an interest in other species and you, you know what i mean like so I can't really, you know, can't really blame them for that, you know, yeah, for, for growth. Sure. Jason um, Newsted used to say, he's like, hell yeah, we sold out every single night of the week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, from a songwriting perspective, that Black Album probably, you know, like as far as the, as far as the formula for hit songs, the, you know, it's the production, man. You, yeah. yeah. Still to this day, man, like, <laughs> It's it's hard to beat that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I the think music's changed. Fourth, I mean, that's the story July, for another day. But Fourth yeah. of July should be National Metallica Day, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> now, nothing goes goes together better than Fourth of July fireworks and and Metallica, man. Heavy metal. Yeah. Put on some some Metallica <laughs> and blow some shit up, you know. <laughs> and to have lived through that too, you know, like when Ride the Lightning yeah. came out, there was like me. And, and my high school wasn't very big. We were like maybe fifteen hundred people tops, eighteen hundred yeah. maybe. You know, um, and nobody knew about Metallica, and that was kind of like a thing back then. That was like that was the cool thing. Like you didn't yeah. really yeah. tell like how, anybody. Yeah, how you know, long I mean, did it take home. for that to get to the other side of the country, though? Like how long had had you know, kill them all or ride the lightning been out before you got it? given that we that didn't year have digital music yeah before. i mean i i got them that year it's funny because i got show no mercy just specifically based off the artwork i remember walking into the the music store and it was on an end cap and you guys know the show no mercy slayer the album cover with the mm-hmm. yep. you know the bullheaded thing with kind of grand mm-hmm. sword i had drawn something in art like in art class in school that was similar so i bought it just on a whim you know, so that's that's how that shit happened back then. Yeah. And you found yeah. out through it, uh, like fanzines. Yeah. Different things, you know. It's yeah. kind of the same thing with the reptile stuff. Like I've got, like I said earlier, a stack of mailers, you know. Dick Gergen, Blackheaded Pythons, 10,000, 15,000 a pair or whatever, you know. Uh, almost 10,000 a pair. Uh, this is back in the late 80s, early 90s. You know? How things have changed. Yeah, I mean, things are leveled off. It's funny, but Condros and like jungle carpets, they've always been the same price. Like, even yeah. go, <laughs> going back then, yeah. they were like 500 bucks a pop, you know, a thousand a pair. Yeah. That's because Condros are awesome. Yeah. Well, I like Condros. They're, they're, they're cool. the best. Debatable. They're dumb, <laughs> but they're pretty. No, yeah, they're cool. Um, the emeralds, too. They're another one. That, they're a weird one. Yeah. I had an emerald one time that threw up this like black. Like ball of yarn. Yeah, no yeah. Been, they give, they was. do like pellets, like owls do. Yeah, we and I've heard a lot of times like they'll throw up like fur. Yeah. Like if you feed yeah. a bird, well, the white lips do fur. that shit too. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I've heard Bolins do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which would make sense again, like that cooler, more often environment. You know, you seem like they would have, they would want to get rid of that non-digestible stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, in their gut sitting there all the time that makes sense yeah. Yeah. well that also makes me wonder just because they are sort of at a cooler temperature and a more consistent cooler temperature that maybe it's just too much 
that requires too much energy to to bother digesting so that's why they give it back yeah uh, that just yeah, requires too much it. too much too much effort on their on their body's part that they're like yep yeah, just give it back give it back <laughs> <laughs> Well, that brings. Who else have you guys had on Blackhead Wise? Like, uh, um, I think I saw Casey on one night. And, uh, Jason Hood was on. Snakes Jason was on. Oogies. That was a couple weeks ago. Um, Good deal. I think he might be it. I want to say we've talked to Brett. Does Bender have some? E- Womas. Uh, I know. Yeah, He's I know he has Womas. I didn't know. He's got some great Womas, Womas actually. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. I don't know if he had a pair of blackheads or not. I don't remember. I know we've talked to someone in the past other than other than Hood, but yeah, it was, I'm pretty it sure it was more so like touched on. You yeah, know? It, it wasn't, wasn't like an yeah. episode. Yeah. So. Well, you know, and look, you know, just to recap on it real fast. I mean, like I, I don't really see him any different than any other species that's kept in that geographical range. You know, like they they typically do good at what you would think. You know, 90 hot in, 84 cool in, whatever. Uh, they're indestructible as long as you don't overfeed them, feed them smaller more often. Um, don't feed them something real big and then let them sit for two weeks. And then like, that's like the the opposite. That's, that's what I was saying. A lot of people think when you say, we don't, you know, don't feed them as much. We'll give them something like really big and then not feed them for the month. That's like, that's how to kill a blackhead. (laughs) Don't do that. Um, breeding's easy. You know, eggs, getting eggs easy, hatching eggs, more difficult. Uh, just remember moisture. Remember venting the eggs the last 15, 10, 15 days. Uh, you have to assist with babies. Once they're going, they're bulletproof. Great species. Yeah. Very interactive. I always t- I, I tell people all the time, they're a monitor with no legs. <laughs> that actually makes complete yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like they... They seem like one was to me, or you were asking the difference. Like one was seem to be a little burpy. Yeah. You know, like burpy, burpy. if it moves, I'm gonna try and eat not, it. Not not as much going on between the eyes. Yeah, <laughs> not as much. And I know that's like funny to say, just in general. But blackheads seem to be a little more calculated. Like they're yeah. more aware of what's going on. Like I'll come in here, and every single one of them, after a, you know five minutes of me moving around, they're all telescoped up. Like, mm-hmm. see what what's you doing? On. Yeah. Um, nice. So, yeah, I mean, they're they're very interactive. Um, is if you handle them a lot, they become very handleable. They they don't. You know, I don't yeah, really I do a lot it. of that with my animals. Yeah. You know, but I have friends that have them. They bought them and they just have them as pets, and they will like chill in their lap with them and yeah, yeah, chill and do whatever you know. Yeah, just no, I've seen, I've I've seen a lot of really calm blackheads. In fact, then the the Georgia show we were at and and during the winter. There is a lady just walking around the show oh, with yeah, a blackhead around her neck, and she was trying to sell it like she had a booth. And she was walking around. I don't even know if she had a booth. Uh, no, she, she did. She had a table because yeah, she. I, I walked back by it. No, she had a booth, but it was literally she had it in like this plastic tub with a paper sign on. I was like, blackhead, twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, and I was like, okay, like cool. Wow. And she was walking around with it, like, hey, you want my blackhead? And I was like. <laughs> Uh, no, I, that's not how you sell snakes, but yeah, to each their right. own, I guess, you know. You know, that's the one thing about the industry. Like, you see a lot of colorful things. Yeah, a lot of characters. A lot of characters yeah. in this industry. It's great. Yeah. Same thing in the music industry. Same thing oh, in the yeah. art world, period. Like, it, you oh, know, yeah, every yeah. industry's got their freaks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're just, I feel like there's a, <laughs> there's a higher ratio of them with us. Then we're the freaks. To normal yeah. people, to normal yeah. people, we're the freaks. So you know, hey, where you? you're really on the far end of the bell curve if you're a, a freak in the the freaks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, 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 yeah, yeah, you're that diamond yeah. in the uh, Jesus psychological Christ. rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, where can people get a hold of you, man? Um. All right. So Garrett Roddy's BlackheadPythons.com. Um. You can reach me there. You can reach me at DerekRoddyLive.com is my music side of stuff just, you know contact me there or whatever facebook of course i have the black headed pythons usa group um, instagram you, you can find me there too whatnot. So, yeah i kind of I, I stay kind of low-key on the social media for the most part i post like you know maybe once a week or once every couple weeks kind of thing mm-hmm. right not like an everyday you know, like ah you know? yeah <laughs> poster or nothing you know? yeah no for sure 
So yeah, I mean, I'm pretty accessible. You know? nice. I'm always game to talk about black hats. You know, I, I talk people teardrops off about them and stuff. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks awesome, so much man. for coming on, man. This was a great no episode. Definitely one I've been wanting to do for a while, and uh, very glad we got to have you come on for uh, for a Blackhead episode. So. Right on. Thank you, guys. It's, and uh, yeah, man. keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, and if anybody has any questions about Blackheads, feel free to reach out. Awesome. Absolutely. This Thanks, show man. was brought to you by Steve Snakes, you his Venom Hot Sauce. Check it out. Snakesuary.com and blackboxcages.com. We love their cages. We love their racks. You will, too. We will be back Monday night. No, we won't. We'll be back. It might be Sunday night that we're doing Snakes and Stogies. I have to talk to Phil still. It's not happening Monday, though, so it'll either be Sunday or Tuesday. We will figure that out. Your entire audience is going to have an aneurysm now. Dude, Billy Jenkins is the one the most. He's like, dude, you got to do it Monday nights, man. I'm bored. And I'm like, look, dude, I got to pick up my wife and kid from the airport. Yeah. So. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Appreciate it. Have a good yeah, night. Man. See you, brother.